an ounce. It's not the thing. I'm Jim Fugate, and it's my privilege to share an ounce with you. This episode includes three little stories that may seem random and somewhat unrelated, but that each teach a single highly valuable principle. Number one, the pufferfish. Have you ever heard of the pufferfish? It's quite a delicacy in Japan, specifically the tiger and tora pufferfish. It has been enjoyed for centuries in China and Japan, and yet it contains a toxin that is 1,000 times more deadly than cyanide, called tetrodotoxin. If the pufferfish is not carefully and properly prepared, this toxin has the effect of causing complete paralysis in its victims. And yet, it is still a favorite of discriminating diners. In fact, though illegal to do so, some will prepare and ingest this delicacy without fully removing all of the toxin. They claim that the dining experience is better when they consume the fish, when it has just enough poison to begin to feel the paralysis, but not enough to completely immobilize. <laughs> it's like playing Russian roulette, I suppose. Will there be enough to kill you, or just enough to keep you from going anywhere for a few hours? <laughs> Why would someone choose to eat that when they could have something else? Hey, hon, I'm off with the boys to the seafood restaurant. Gonna have the puffer fish again. Make sure my will is in order. Be back later, maybe. <laughs> Number two, a new screwdriver. The backyard mechanic got his first set of really good quality tools. Everything he needed to work on that classic old jalopy that he'd been tinkering with for the past two years in his detached garage slash man cave. Then, one night he noticed some noise coming from the garage. That crazy raccoon must be back. He starts yelling as he walks across the yard to scare it away, and then he pops the door open and he hollers a little more to convince the pesky little critter to go somewhere else. Unfortunately, he realizes a bit too late that it wasn't a raccoon rummaging around. It was a scared and strung out junkie looking for something of value to steal so he could make his next score. And the junkie, frightened by the backyard mechanic, finds a nice new Phillips head screwdriver to defend himself with. Sparing the minute and uh, gruesome details, let's just say that the junkie returns the brand new borrowed screwdriver by plunging it into the would-be car restorer's chest. Number three, of coins and penny candy. Back in the late 1800s, there were two young boys from wealthy families walking along a lane near some wheat fields. They were on their way home from a little store where they had used a little pocket money to purchase some penny candy. The pair spotted a man working to cut wheat with a scythe in the field to prepare it for harvesting. The worker didn't notice them. With his head down, he just kept working. His task was nearly done. The boys then noticed on the edge of the road, just outside the fence, the man had placed his old shoes and a white shirt carefully on the ground to keep them from being soiled by the hard labor he was doing, we suppose. The boys thought, wouldn't it be funny if we took those shoes and that shirt and tossed them off this nearby bridge? What a funny prank. But instead they thought, let's put our leftover pocket change and a piece or two of candy in those shoes and just leave them where they are. What confusion they anticipated to see from the man when he finished his work and went to retrieve those shoes. The boys watched from down the road under the bridge to see what the man would do. The man put on his shirt and then sat to pull on those dusty old shoes. His expression changed as he felt something inside the first shoe and he quickly removed it from his foot. He tipped up the shoe and poured its contents into his hand and found a piece of candy and some coins. He quickly grabbed the other shoe and found more candy and more coins. The boys quietly watched as the man knelt down and with his face and hands to the sky, he sent up a loud prayer of thanksgiving 
that he could feed his children another day. The boys remained silent as the man put on his shoes and leapt to his feet and ran to his family. As youngsters, they had no idea the value a few coins would be to a man struggling to feed his family. So, here's the outs. Three little stories, each of which have a few notions we can learn from. The highly sought after fish dinner that might kill you. <laughs> the new screwdriver meant to build a car takes a life. The few coins and penny candy placed by a pair of mischievous boys make a man's day. The point here is that it's not the thing, not the fish, not the screwdriver, not the coins and candy. These are just objects, implements, things which we might act upon. Evil and good, they are both very real. They do exist in constant opposition to each other. But good and evil, they are not in things. It is instead what is in the heart of the individual, be they the producer, the consumer, or observer, of the always dispassionate thing that matters. Good and evil, love or hate, these tenets exist in the hearts and souls of people as they individually choose. Max Lucado said it this way, you change your life by changing your heart. And that's it, an ounce submitted for your consideration. <laughs>